My name is Erin Reid. I am the marketing manager for Polaris MEP, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to this fast-paced, (laughs) bite-sized webinar that we are running today that will explore quality objectives requirements for ISO. Chris, if you can advance a little bit. Excellent. Just want to make sure I'm getting this right. So Polaris MEP is a nonprofit consulting group. Our sole mission is to help small and medium-sized Rhode Island manufacturers improve, grow, and increase their profitability. And one of the ways that we do that is through quality management services. So quality management systems is one area in which Polaris MEP supports manufacturers. We help manufacturers create and maintain the framework that ensures you comply with standards imposed by customers, industry, or federal regulations. And Chris Samiri, our presenter today, leads the delivery of our quality consulting services and training. He helps clients with ISO 9001 compliance readiness and is our instructor for this series. Chris, is it time to take that first bite out of ISO? It absolutely is, and thank you for the introduction. And I'd also like to thank everyone for joining us today for our inaugural session of ISO Bytes. Like Erin had said, we're planning a series of fast-paced, information-packed webinars to take a bite out of a particular requirement of the standard. Our goal is to help clarify expectations, give insight into the requirement, and provide actionable tips that you can take back to your company and use. So let's begin. Now, if you've ever worked with me in the past, you know I always like to say, let's go to the standard. So when talking about quality objectives, what does ISO 9001 say? Well, it says the organization shall establish quality objectives at relevant functions, levels, and processes, et cetera. It also says that the organization shall maintain documented information on those quality objectives. And those documented uh, requirements are listed. They have to be consistent with your quality policy. They have to be measurable. They have to take into account applicable requirements. They have to be relevant to conformity of products and and services, et cetera. They have to be monitored. They have to be communicated and they have to be updated as appropriate. So what does all of that mean? Well, the good news is we've got some really good tips for you coming up here. But before we get there, one more clause. When planning how to achieve its quality objectives, the organization shall determine what will be done, what resources will be required, who will be responsible, when it will be completed, and how the results will be evaluated. All right, so now we know what ISO requires of us. Let's talk about a couple of tips that we can give you to help with your quality objectives. Tip number one, use SMART criteria. Okay, so those of you familiar with SMART criteria, they should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Auditors will use this as a litmus test to see if your objectives will hold up to meeting the needs of the standard. So be prepared ahead of time by checking them against the criteria yourselves. Looking back at section 6.2.1 that we just looked at, many of those requirements listed line up with SMART criteria. So as you come up with quality objectives, either on your way to becoming ISO certified or as a way of updating them, always apply this as a litmus test. They should use SMART criteria. Okay, tip number two. Create a centralized quality objective action matrix. So have an action plan somewhere where you can show what you're doing, what quality objective it's supporting, how did you identify it? We'll talk more about that after. Who's going to be responsible? What are the required resources? How will you know if it's effective? And you can see an example on your screen here. So as you look at this, you say, wow, that sounds a lot like Clause 6.2.2 that we just looked at earlier that says you need to determine what will be done by whom and when, et cetera. So having a matrix like this makes that a lot easier. Something that you can go to 
be able to print and show an auditor or just use internally when you meet, whether it's a management review meeting or a weekly production huddle. It's a place you can go to and look at and say, here's what we're working on to support our quality objectives. So this will help you to comply with section 6.2.2. And here's a bonus tip. As you complete action items on this list, move them to a separate sheet called completed. These then become objective evidence of continual improvement projects, and that will help you to satisfy clause 10.3, continual improvement. So a little bonus tip there. Okay, we said this is gonna be fast paced, we've got a lot to cover. Tip number three, make sure your quality objectives are just that. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Let's consider the following. If I say I'm going to reduce scrap in my turning department by 6% this year, well, that's a pretty good goal. I'm saying what I wanna do, where I wanna focus, I wanna quantify it, I wanna give it a time, same with the next one. If I want to reduce inventory on hand by 10% the next quarter, or if I want to reduce my mean time to repair by 5% by the end of August. These are all excellent goals and objectives, but they're not necessarily quality objectives. So keep in mind management objectives versus quality objectives versus environmental objectives versus safety objectives, et cetera. And a good test is quality objectives should concern themselves with customer satisfaction. So the standard says your quality objectives should tie back to your quality policy. And your quality policy should tie back to customer satisfaction and meeting the requirements and needs of those customers. So while those are excellent goals to have as a business, I would consider those more to be management objectives than quality objectives. Now we'll take a look a little bit later at some examples of good quality objectives, but for now I've sat through several audits where I've seen, you know, really good goals like this, but the auditor stopped and said, this is great, but show me something that's going to directly impact your customer satisfaction. Okay, <clears throat> tip number four, consolidate your reporting to a single sheet or as best as you can, try to consolidate your reporting to one or two sheets. Now, sometimes this isn't always easy, right? Sometimes our information comes from multiple different softwares and sources, et cetera, okay? We may get on-time delivery from an ERP system. We may get uh, quality information from another system, et cetera. If you're able to, without creating too much extra work, consolidate your reporting into a single sheet and this is going to serve two purposes. Okay, the benefits here are twofold. One is during your audit, when the auditor gets to your quality objectives, inevitably that person is going to ask you, how are you doing making progress towards your quality objectives? And it's nice to be able to hand the auditor a single sheet or two sheets of paper and say, here it is, here's the summary, okay? It's a really nice snapshot for them it shows that you've put a lot of thought and effort into it and that you've come prepared. There's nothing worse than sitting through an audit when the auditor asks you for something and you're shuffling through reams of paper and folders and binders, et cetera, and you say, I've got that, give me a minute, I'll get it for you. Um, as best as you can, try to get your reporting down to one or two sheets of paper. But it's not just for the auditor's benefit. If you remember earlier, when we looked at the standard, the standard said that those quality objectives should also be communicated. But what does that mean, right? Can I just sit at my desk and, and say it out loud? And, you know, I've communicated it, I'm good. You want to be able to demonstrate these to your facility. You wanna let your folks know how well you're doing. So by putting it into a report that's concise and simple, you might be able to either print this up and hang it on a board in your facility somewhere. Uh, if you have monitors in your facility, say in a break room or on the floor, you might be able to have this show as part of the information that you show. So when the auditor asks, are you communicating your quality objectives and your performance against them? You can say, yes, it's communicated in our facility. You know, our folks see the same exact information in the same exact format that you're seeing today. And on the subsequent facility tour, you'll be able to point that out to the auditor. 
And then hopefully during your employee interviews, when the auditor asks, so how are you doing making progress towards your quality objectives? You know, they'll at least be able to know where to go and look and say, hey, let's go take a look over here. We'll, we'll review them together. Okay. So that's, that's a good reason to try to get it down to the simplest way that you can present the information that you can. Okay, so we talked about objectives. We have management objectives. We have quality objectives, safety, environmental, et cetera. But I want to give some examples of quality objectives. And these are some pretty popular quality objectives that you tend to see. And you may even have some of these at your own facilities, okay? And they'll, they'll be something like, we're gonna send out fewer than X percent of products with a defect, okay? We will achieve X percent of on-time deliveries. We will maintain a customer satisfaction rate of X percent. And you are maintaining customer satisfaction rate, right? Because that's another part of the standard and maybe a future ISO bites, we'll see. You wanna increase product performance to X hours of use, let's say. Um, have zero product recalls. These are all really good examples of quality objectives. But my point here is, remember, you are free to update, add, or change your quality objectives as time goes on. You're also free to set your goals. However, be prepared to justify your decision. So if I say my goal for on-time delivery is anything less than 100%, if I put a number of 96 or 92 or 80. I just need to be able to justify why that is an acceptable number to our organization, okay? Um, there's really no right or wrong answer, but an auditor is gonna wanna know why are you accepting that and what are you doing? What are you doing to make continual improvements to increase that number? So that as time goes on, that 92 becomes 94, becomes 96, okay? So be realistic but don't be facetious. In other words, don't set a low bar to make yourself look good. So you're free to come up with your objectives. Again, just keep in mind, they should have a direct line of sight to your quality policy, and they should also be directly related in some manner to customer satisfaction. Bonus tip, okay. Where should we identify our quality objectives? In other words, where should we document what they are. And I put this in here because I've seen it in a lot of cases where some companies put it directly in their quality manual and they'll say, here's our quality objectives. Some companies will put it in a separate policy or a separate document. And in their quality manual, they'll say, go and look at, you know, document such and such for our current objectives. The answer is it's up to you. I've had auditors ask why the decision was made in either case. So why have you decided to put them in your manual? Or why have you decided to separate them from your manual? <clears throat> the issue with putting them in your manual is if you do make frequent changes, let's say each year your company revisits them and you decide that you're going to update or add to them, you've got to do a manual revision, right? So for some folks, it's easier to have it as a separate document. And they say, I'd rather not deal with revising my manual. For other folks, they say, I'm not too worried about that. Maybe once a year, I don't mind doing a manual revision. Um, we can go ahead and do that. So if you've got them in your manual, that's great. If an auditor happens to ask you, why have you got them in your manual? Wouldn't it be easier for you to, to manage them separately? Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with having them in your manual. So you can simply tell them we're okay doing a revision when the time comes. But for right now, it's just not often enough that we feel it's cumbersome. So keep that in mind. Bonus tip number two. Wow, you know what, Aaron, as I sit here, I'm thinking to myself, we should really start charging admission for this because we're giving out a lot of good bonus tips here today. Bonus tip number two, how often should you revisit your quality objectives? Well, the easy answer is when your organization is consistently meeting or exceeding your objectives, it's probably a good time to either tighten those up or come up with new ones. So one thing I would advise against 
is establishing objectives for the sake of establishing objectives. I've seen some companies that have objectives that are north of a dozen. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. If you have the wherewithal to manage that, that's fine. Um, but often is the case, you'll see, you know, less than that number and it works for them. The truth is there's no magic number. I've seen plenty of companies pass certification audits with two quality objectives. So how often should you revisit it? Well, you want to strive to consistently challenge yourselves. And also remember that continual improvement is a requirement of the standard. So year over year, if your auditor is coming back and you're consistently meeting or exceeding your objectives and you haven't changed them, a good auditor will probably challenge you, will probably say to you, you're sitting still. You really ought to think about either increasing or tightening up that objective or coming up with new ones. Because honestly, if you're consistently meeting or exceeding, then your team has demonstrated that you're able to comply and you're able to do a wonderful job, why not strive to continually improve? So to that end, when it's ready, when your team is ready, when you're able to consistently meet and exceed what you've got, either tighten them up or add new ones. And remember the quality objective support action matrix and, you know, there's contact information at the end of this. So if anybody would like a copy of one of those, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to share that with you. But it's a great place to not only keep track of what you're doing, keep track of those action items. But again, when you move those over to the completed file, boy, there's some good objective evidence for continual improvement projects. So uh, a number of good things coming out of this today. You've got objective evidence for your quality objectives. You've got a good way to be able to communicate it to both the auditor and to your facility. You've got a way of tracking good customer satisfaction, and you've got a goal of when you should update and, and revisit and add some new ones possibly. So we've gone through a lot this morning, uh, this afternoon, and I just want to uh, wrap up here and say, if there are any questions, or any uh, observations, or if anybody just wanted to share, perhaps an objective uh, that they have that's really working well for them, we'd love to hear it. There's some contact info on your screen. So again, if there's something that I went over this morning that you'd like me to share with you or to talk about a little bit more in depth, feel free to reach out, give me a call, shoot me an email, and we can have that conversation. I think we did pretty well, giving out a lot of, a lot of good information in a short period of time here today. Uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think, Aaron. Let's let's open up. Uh, Chris, I think that you are a pretty good value for the money here. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. The, the bonus tips are especially actionable, I think. So I'm really glad you were able to include those. So I hope people will start putting their questions in chat. But I did get a direct messaged question from somebody who's feeling a little shy today. Excellent. And that was specifically the question of what is the most common issue that you see auditors cite when they're reviewing this clause, when they're reviewing this requirement? The most common issue I see with regard to quality objectives is that with section 6.2.2, there's no clear action plan of what you're doing, when you're gonna have it done, who's gonna do it, um, what's that status look like? So an auditor will sit and say, show me what you, you know, you've got your quality objectives. You may or may not be meeting them. Show me what you're doing to make progress towards them. And there's, you know, well, we've got this going on. We've got that going on. Don't forget it has to be documented. So that's why something like that quality objective matrix I showed is a really great way to answer all of those questions. Because some folks may have some of that, who's working on it, what they're doing. But for a time, they won't put a time, they'll put ongoing. And guess what? Three years from now at the research audit, it's still listed, it's still ongoing. Okay, those are some of the areas that we see auditors ding you on. So it sounds like that T in SMART goals, which is truly a due date on your matrix as well, is, is an area that the auditor will be looking closely at, making sure that that's an action plan. All right. So one more question. And it was, I think you had a, you can put things, the answer was wherever you choose. Um, and it was, is it okay to put our quality objectives in our training materials? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have to have them documented. 
you'll want to have that one area where they're officially documented. And it could be in the manual, it could be a separate policy, it could be both, right? But you just have to remember, you've got to keep both up to date and, up and in sync with each other. But you can put them on posters in your facility. You can put them in your HR handbook. You could put them in training materials. Actually, the more you can get them in front of your folks, your employees' faces, the better, because it's just going to ingrain that within them. And guess what? Come employee interview time during your audit, they're going to know what to say because they've seen it in so many different areas. So feel free to put it wherever. Just keep in the back of your mind as you update them, you've got to go through everywhere they're listed and make sure that those are up to date as well. Good question. Excellent answer. And I think that that's it, Chris. Unless anybody has an additional question, please put it in chat or raise your virtual hand. And otherwise, we will be able to get you out to lunch early, which is kind of exciting. Excellent. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you to everybody again today. Feel free. My contact information is on the screen. I always will welcome to have a conversation. And uh, yeah, we kept it in time. We gave you a lot of great information. So we hope to see you at this next month. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Have a wonderful day. Take care.